pleasure leave. Those words would reappear and cause me to think about whether 
I too was eager to move on from high school. As I look back on that moment now from freshman year, and I imagine myself in that position, as if I were the one leaning up against that same railing talking to my friends, the case, I can say, be the just opposite. I hope I speak for all of you when I say that our experience at RMHS has not been one that a student wants to rush through or get over as quickly as possible. Our shared experience and a whole array of high school opportunities should make us anything but bitter or resentful. We should be proud looking back on all the things we've been a part of over the last four years. Our class has experienced some of RMHS's greatest moments in recent memory, and I want to touch on several areas that we've excelled. To begin with, in these past four years, our athletics have been second to none. I cannot name all of our many accomplishments in sports, but I will highlight a few. Our girls' swim team has won multiple state championships and middle sexing titles. Our football team has gone to the Super Bowl twice and won the middle sexing title this year. Our guys and girls lacrosse teams have shown they are among the best, but the guys have been the state championship this past year. Through all of this, I vividly remember the rocket pride through this past year. That both the players and the fans possessed the games. Our endless 0867 chance and our intensity are incomparable. The excitement brought on by our class, on and off the court, field, or whatever, cannot be compared to. The countless number of athletes going on to the college level is a great example of our class's love and commitment for athletics. Of course, with our excellent athletic program comes our equally excellent program of the arts. And I must say, our class takes the arts to a whole level. Our drama department has put on multiple shows every year that would take your breath away. The many award-winning performance bands here at RMHS play music that wows, and our amazing chorus and other singers never fail to put on unforgettable shows. Beyond regular performances, these art programs have assisted the senior class with fundraising, most notably this past March with this RMHS. The overall student participation, on stage, backstage, and in the audience, made this RMHS a record-breaking fundraiser this year. With such a huge group effort, we were able to showcase to you all a variety of senior talent, including introducing you all to Farmer Will. Complete with myself, the Anna Cowboy Hat or Rose and Glam, which I must admit, I look very good at it. These, program, these art programs of drama, music, and singing encompass a beautiful side of RMHS, and our class delivers on that with flying colors. There are so many other areas where we as a class excel. See the robotics team in our very own field house take home the North Shore districts a couple of months ago. It was absolutely amazing. The other countless clubs are seniors have led, Audio UN, Mock Trials, Mantis Harvest, a world of difference of all presented RMHS to the community and local areas with integrity and respect, and have given RMHS a solid reputation for being a place that values excellence. And not just here in Massachusetts, but our seniors have represented our RMHS proudly all over the U.S. and the world through things like Habitat and Humanity in North Carolina and other cross-country service trips, along with the many exchange trips all over countries all over Europe. All you have to do is look through the yearbook that we got last week and see page after page of excellence on display happening right here in Reading many corners of the world. But what gets displayed outside the classroom is only made possible by what goes on inside the classroom. We've been blessed to have an amazing staff here at RMHS, and they will do anything to support us. So many of them come in early and they stay late, and they go the extra mile to help us succeed. They ask for our, our attention and desire to learn, and we strive to give it them full heartedly. Our class has produced some of the smartest kids the school has ever seen, and our class is humble. Our school has called for leaders in many areas, and our class has answered that call to lead. I'm happy to say that in our own way, we, the class of 2019, proved those former seniors wrong, as we've made RMHS an amazing place with countless memories. A place that we may be leaving, but will not soon forget. These past four years have been a privilege and an honor to be with all of you, and I can't, I couldn't have asked for a better group of classmates to spend it with. Now, for all of us moving on to our future lives, whether that's four years of college, two years, trade school, military, working, or taking a gap year, I want to say one thing, in all of your future endeavors, there's a will, there's a way. Thank you. At this time, we would like to invite Madeline Lieberman, the class of 2019 salutatorian, to the podium for her address to the class of 2019. Hello, class of 2019, and hello to our teachers, families, and friends who are here to support us. We are very grateful. This is our day, which is very surreal to me right now, and I'm sure to a lot of you. This day means a lot of things. It means that for four years, we stressed over classes and celebrated our wins. We did some things that we didn't love, 
and a lot of things that we did. We found our places on sports teams, in the drama club, and robotics, and choir. All of us are here because we cared about something at this school. And because of that, we're a little different than we were four years ago. I know I am. Throughout high school, I worried that I cared too much about too many things, things that might seem trivial to other people. I felt embarrassed or ashamed for loving ice cream a little too much or being extra for spending hours on a school assignment. <laughs> or when I first heard Smetana's The Moldo in music class and I was transfixed. Most people I talk to don't know The Moldo. It's not Beethoven's fifth. The composer wrote it about a river in the Czech Republic. But the first few bars created something so strong in my heart that I thought I would see it physically if I looked hard enough. The grand, sweeping melody of violins transforms notes on a page to the image of an enormous, flowing river. I can't describe how the Moldo makes me feel. For the first time in my life, I thought I could never feel as strongly about anything other than this. I believe in the Moldo feeling in caring way too much about anything and everything. I believe it's okay to show you care too much. There is never too much of the Moldo feeling, no matter what the outside world tells you. In our four years, we've seen a lot. We've seen senseless, hateful acts from people who clearly didn't care much about anyone. There's been racist and anti-Semitic graffiti in our town and violent attacks on Jews and people of color across the country. And we have seen over and over the destruction of our environment by those who care too little about our future on a ravaged planet. These events are daunting and demoralizing. I felt desperate to make people care. But as I look back over these four years, I find countless reasons to believe that we, the class of 2019, are passionate about so many things and from there, we will make a difference. I look back, and I'm awed by those of you who led a walkout in honor of the Parkland shooting victims with your heartfelt and powerful words. I'm inspired by the real-world problem-solving projects, where you worked intensely to present original ideas. And I'm encouraged by those of you who spoke and sang at the candlelight vigil for the Pittsburgh victims and the rally against hate. Throughout high school, I worried that, as teenagers, we were apathetic. But I've met a lot of you, and I know that you all love your families and friends and clubs and pets and community service. The class of 2019 and our generation overall must cherish our personal goals and passions and also find a way to improve the world. This is a time when we cannot afford not to care and not to act. It is truly up to this generation to protect our planet from climate change, our nation from the threat of gun violence, and our spirit from hate. The easy thing to do is to say, I don't care, or it's too hard, or I'm just not a leader. We're leaving with an enormous challenge, not just to feel passionate about what moves us, but to act to mark our world positively as well. And I know we can do it. Every little thing that we love can be a way to facilitate change. We are not just people who love to paint. We are people who paint the police station with a beautiful mural to build trust and community. We aren't just people who love to dance and listen to music. We're people who throw a wildly successful dance marathon to raise money for children's hospital. I know that each of us has our Moldo feeling, our passion, and we have the power to take that extra step and use it to change our world for the better. So go out there into the daunting world, class of 2019, and march, walk out, vote, be extra, and care too much. Thank you. 
and administrators. Salutations, families and friends. Hello, class of 2019, and congratulations. You all look radiant, despite those hats. Honestly, I've worked on costumes for six drama shows and have been working on my own costumes for years, and I've seen few hats stranger than graduation caps. I know, there's all sorts of history and tradition in them, but still, that's a crazy hat. Anyway, while I've got your attention for the next few minutes, I'd like to share a couple of thoughts about connecting with other people. From everything I've heard from those who have graduated about graduation, it's a time of connecting with others. It's a time of realizing how many awesome people you went to school with and never really got to know. It's a time of increased friendliness, which I personally can vouch for after attending prom. I've never heard the phrase, oh my gosh, you look so good, exclaimed as often as I did there. Truly, you all were stunning. For me, it brings to mind a tweet from one of my favorite podcasts, Welcome to Night Vale. Today, you will meet a beautiful stranger. Stranger. Actually, hundreds of beautiful strangers. Everyone is beautiful, and you know almost none of them. It's such a nice change of pace from the usual judgmental, isolating world we live in, where you have to filter away every blemish before you post a photo to social media, and where nobody talks to strangers because it's more comfortable to interact with your existing friends. As a kid, you're taught over and over again to not talk to strangers. At this moment of your lives, however, that might be the worst possible advice. As you connect one last time to the people around you here, and as you meet new people this fall, whether in college or on some different adventure, you'll have to talk to strangers. In fact, you'll be better off for having talked to them. At this age, talking to strangers, especially talking to them in person, is beneficial to all involved. You both get an expanded perspective, more cool stories to tell, and maybe even a new friend. When you talk to someone face to face, they become more real to you. It's easy when all you have are generalizations or preconceptions to judge other people. It's easy to gossip, to criticize, or even to scroll cruel graffiti when the people you are targeting are just an abstract concept in your head. How do you fix this? by talking to strangers. The more time you spend with other people, truly getting to know them, the more real and present they will become to you, and the harder it will become for you to be thoughtless or mean. Don't meet people just for the sake of having met them. Meet people with a willingness to get to know them, and you won't settle for assumptions. You'll have a shot at true understanding, because knowing people, really knowing them, takes time. So take that time, now and always. It's worth it. Take the time to talk to a few beautiful strangers and see what you can learn. Thank you, and again, congratulations. <laughs>
would like to invite Ms. Boynton, principal of Reading Memorial High School, to the podium for her address to the class of 2019. Thank you. I want to acknowledge uh, Bryn Lambroff and Rebecca Corey for being our MCs this afternoon as well. So give them a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of you here at the 2019 graduation ceremony for Reading Memorial High School. I'd like to first thank and acknowledge all of the hard work that went into planning today's celebratory event. Thank you to our administrative assistants, Ms. Scouting and Mrs. O'Rourke, for all the planning and organizing behind the scenes, to our facilities and custodial staff for helping set up the space and working on the sound system, to Reading Police and Fire Departments for, for providing support and safety, to Ms. Killian, this is her last official graduation, by the way. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Strout, who is absolutely a force behind graduation planning, am I right? <laughs> to Mr. McSweeney, Mr. Broken Rope, Ms. Prey, and Ms. Betty Field for your work in planning for this event and supporting our senior class. Thank you also to our administration, faculty, and staff for supporting our students, for being here tonight to support me, uh, supporting our students through their years in the Reading Public School. A heartfelt thanks to you all, um, parents and caregivers, for sharing your children with, with, with us and entrusting us with their education. Congratulations to the class of 2019 on achieving one of the most important milestones in your lives. You've been on a long journey of learning, growth, and maturity since you set foot in your preschool or kindergarten classrooms. Some of you have been in writing your whole lives. Some of you joined our community further along in your journey. No matter your past, you all made it here to this celebratory day through your hard work, effort, and perseverance. You should be very proud of this accomplishment. However, a journey such as this one is never traveled alone. Along the way, you have the support, advice, encouragement, mentorship, hello, yep. mentorship, guidance, and love of many others, including parents, teachers, coaches, advisors, mentors, and friends. I'm gonna do what Will did. So once again, to all our graduates, I ask that you stand now, turn to your audience of supporters and champions, give them a round of applause. In thanks. Because it's with this team, thank you. It is with this team, your team, that you've achieved this milestone. High school graduation is a turning point in your lives. It marks the end of one important chapter and the beginning of another. You are likely feeling a range of strong and conflicting emotions, from pride and excitement that this day, this moment, is finally here, to fear and anxiety of the unknown path that lays ahead. When I was selected last year as your new principal, I felt as many of you are feeling now, excited about the possibilities, scared I might mess up, proud of what I had accomplished. A good friend and mentor gave me a very simple yet profound gift that one of her mentors gave to her when she became principal. It is something that I look at every day, especially when that day is full of challenge and struggle. It has become my mantra of sorts, and I want to share it with you. It is a civil, simple silver bracelet. I have it on today. I actually never take it off. With the phrase, you got this, written on it. This brief phrase gives me the strength to lean in, dig deep, and keep going. It also reminds me that when times get tough, I am not alone. I have friends and mentors I can count on to help recharge and refocus my resilience and resolve and maintain courage in the face of any challenge. While I did not get a bracelet for each of you, what I can give you are these words, you got this. Say it with me. You got this. Audience, this is interactive. You got this. You got this. As you head out into the world, you will face challenges that test you. But you got this. You will hit unforeseen. 
seen roadblocks and setbacks, but you got this. You will experience both joy and heartache, but you got this. You will all go out and mark, make your mark on the world, and you got this. As I have made my transition this year into my role as principal at Reading Memorial High School, I have been continuously impressed by the young people who make up this graduating class. You are intelligent, talented, curious, artistic, creative, and athletic. Your accomplishments are remarkable and noteworthy with National Merit Scholars, League and State Championships, and award-winning performances as just some of the accolades you have achieved. You are leaving our doors to an impressive and wide array of colleges, gap years, career paths, and military service. However, your accomplishments only tell part of the story. You are, above all, kind, compassionate, and caring young adults who are unfailingly polite and respectful and are committed to standing up to injustice and making the world a better place. I see a unity, a togetherness, and camaraderie in you as a group which is a rare and precious quality that I urge you to preserve. Your togetherness is what makes you strong. More importantly, I am so hopeful for the future of our country and our world, knowing it is in your capable and creative hands. I encourage you, as you leave Reading Memorial High School as graduates of the class of 2019, to be bold, to try new things, be courageous, and stand up for what you know is right. Find your passion, Live a life with purpose and be true to yourselves. As Simon Sinek wrote, in together, in together is better. It's a great inspirational little book. What good is an idea if it remains an idea? Try, experiment, iterate, fail, try again, change the world. Congratulations, class of 2019. You got this. Good afternoon. Before we begin, please join me in a moment of silence for the victims and their families of the tragic shooting that happened on Friday at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Thank you. Members of the Reading School Committee, Principal Boynton, faculty, fellow administrators, distinguished guests, community members, but most importantly, members of the class of 2019 and their proud families and friends. It is with great pride that I address you today as you complete your graduation requirements for the Reading Public Schools. Each of you have made your own unique positive impact on this school. You have earned our congratulations and recognition, and now you are ready to make your own imprint on the world. To use the analogy of a marathon runner, you have reached a very important mile marker in your race today. The 26.2 mile journey that you are running has been both exciting and challenging. The next set of mile markers will be even more fascinating with many different possible paths and opportunities to recenter and reset your mindset. Personally, this analogy of the marathon has resonated with me as well, as this past April, I ran the Boston Marathon to raise money for Rosie's Place in Boston, a homeless shelter for women and children. This amazing experience was one of the most challenging and fulfilling of my life. I learned that running and training for a marathon is very similar to the personal quests that each of us are navigating. Each of us has checkpoints along the way. Each has challenges and setbacks. Each requires preparation and training, and each has a sense of accomplishment. To that end, I want to share with you three key mile markers, or checkpoints, that hopefully you can use as training tips while you embark on the next leg of your own personal race. Over the next few minutes, stay with me as I take you through the marathon course. Imagine you are with your running peers and you take off, starting the journey together. 
As you travel along, you get into your groove. The first part of your race course is relatively flat, with just a few rolling hills. When you reach your first check-in point, you see a sign that says, embrace and appreciate your support team. You think, what does that mean? Earlier, you heard our amazing RMH singers singing, You Raise Me Up. The lyrics connect to this theme of support. I will not sing it, but a couple key phrases. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. It is here you realize that training for a marathon cannot be done alone. You have to have an amazing support team, which includes family, friends, colleagues, and fellow runners. During the race, course volunteers are at every mile marker providing water, medical attention, and most importantly, encouragement. The crowd along the way cheers you on, and the runners that you run alongside support each other. As a young adult, you too have had a support team during this leg of your own personal race. Your parents, grandparents, relatives, friends, and your teachers, staff, coaches, advisors, administrators, and others have been critical in helping you complete today's significant milestone of high school graduation. These important people have provided you with care, boundaries, encouragement, and their love. They have educated you and prepared you for this very moment so that you can now take the next steps. They have an abundance of memories, which they have stored in their hearts and minds for today, for days like today. Over the next several days, take the time to express your thanks and gratitude to the members of your support team. Hug them if you wish, but please, do it in person and not by emoji on Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram or any other social media. Personal connections matter and will set you up for life. As we now go back to the marathon, you now hit the second check-in point where you begin to reach steep and continuous hills. These are challenging and difficult at times to conquer. At the Boston Marathon, the four hills in Newton, which includes Heartbreak Hill, is the most difficult part of the course. For some, it is the tipping point, the point the race in which they know the finish line is so close, but they are exhausted physically and mentally, and many just can't continue as they are out of gas. However, those who do continue hear the cheers and encouragement from all who have come to watch and support them. It is important to remember that everyone has their own heartbreak hill with challenges, setbacks, and adversity. My advice to you is to look at these challenges as opportunities and address them head on with confidence, personal drive, and out of the box thinking. And please don't ever give up. Many of you have your own personal stories on how you have conquered your heartbreak hill. Throughout the year, I've been inspired hearing and reading these stories. Here are a few of the examples. During their four years at Reading Memorial High School, Casey Roberts and Teresa Ortiz have both displayed courage and fortitude, overcoming significant challenges and obstacles in their lives. Both will be attending college next year with Casey attending Salem State University, majoring in psychology, and Teresa is going to pursue practical nursing at North Shore Community College. Jalen Reed has exhibited resilience and character in her time at Reading Memorial High School. Go, Jalen! She is a strong student and an even better person, someone who's always looking out for her peers. Jalen's late grandmother, who many of us knew as Mother Reed, was the inspiration for Jalen to attend the University of Hartford in the fall to pursue physical therapy. Eamon Langlois has overcome vision challenges throughout his life. His speeches, drama performances, and the written word have been extremely motivating. At a Veterans Day speech, he challenged the audience to question why the holiday focuses less on honoring veterans and more on commercial activities. At another emotional speech, he delivered in the freezing cold in memory of students who lost their lives in Parkland, Florida school shootings. He talked about the senselessness of gun violence. Eamon is now a published author as one of his short stories titled Her Books was published in the Canvas Teen Literary Journal this past January. Victor Dos Santos is an inspiration for young people who immigrated to the United States. Victor was born in Brazil, and at 13 years old, he came to the United States to be with his parents, who had worked hard to pave the way for the family to join them. Not only did he learn to speak English in a six-month period, but he advanced to our most rigorous courses as a senior in high school, uh, placing in the top 15% of the class. Just a few examples. 
examples of how your classmates have persevered to conquer their heartbreak hills. This now leads me to the final push in the marathon, and that's the final analogy. You are now reaching the home stretch, and we reach our final check-in point. My advice to you is simple. Throw your room, take care of yourself, and finish strong as you cross that finish line. Then look for new races, new challenges, and new trainings. You have only one body and one mind. You need to take care of both. Be careful what you fill it with. Find physical activities and eating habits that will keep your body healthy. Take time to slow down and take care of your emotional well-being. Find ways to contribute to society and participate in community service. Unplug yourself regularly from technology. By practicing healthy habits long term, you will have a more fulfilling marathon race. Most importantly, when you cross that finish line of one race, you have the opportunity to participate in new races. Each course represents a new possibility, a new opportunity, a new dream. Try a course where your dreams can become a reality, where you can learn and grow, and where it's okay to question the status quo. Then you can say, I am glad I chose this course, instead of saying, I wish I chose another. Remember, it's not about the destination you reach, but the journey that you take along the way. You are already showing this perseverance. Here are some more amazing examples. Prior to going to Gordon College in 2020, Dan Erickson will be participating in a gap year at a full year program in Costa Rica called the Punta Torches Bible School, where he will be studying in Spanish alongside students from all around the world. During the year, he will be immersed into the culture and Spanish language, and he will have opportunities to do short-term mission trips in the surrounding areas. A.P. Ryan spent second semester of 10th grade abroad in Bolivia, where he was able to attend school, travel, and visit family. His experiences have helped shape his vision of the future, where he hopes to eventually live and work internationally. Arabella Rice has served as the kennel manager for the Service Dog Project, which raises dogs to become service dogs and then donates them to the mobility impaired. People bound to a wheelchair or crutches receive dogs with, and were able to gain greater independence and security in their lives. Tali Shore has been a change agent in our community, where she has actively spoken in community and school events against the rising tide of anti-Semitism and hate in our community and beyond. Recently, Tali won first prize from over 200 other entries for the Israel Abiner Holocaust Essay Contest. In addition, she was honored by the Jewish Community Relations Council on May 5th, and this fall will be honored in Washington, D.C. at the Holocaust Memorial Museum. Several of your classmates are pursuing education with a goal of becoming a teacher. Georgiana Jones, Ava Rice, Karen O'Neill, Robin Cashin, Gemma Chenchi, and Elena Cusada will be pursuing majors in college that focus on shaping the minds of future students. Thank you for choosing this path. And then last, last but certainly not least, I am also proud to say that we have three members of the class of 2019 who will be making commitments to our armed forces. Nils Willen will be enlisting in the National Guard in Salem State with a major in nursing. with an ROT scholarship and majoring in criminal justice. And Kendra Richardson is enlisted in the United States Marines. Thank you to the three of you for defending our country and doing such important work. The students that I have highlighted today are only a few of the many examples of this graduating class who are the unsung heroes among us. Each of you have amazing stories to tell, and each of you will be pursuing your own paths, whether it be higher education, the military, vocation, or joining the workforce. It reaffirms my belief, as you've heard many times already today, that our future is in very good hands. So class of 2019, as you can see, your ongoing exploration is very similar to running a marathon. You'll experience accomplishments, setbacks, challenges, and learning moments along your unpredictable way. You will continue to learn the value of family, hard work, service for others, and positively contributing to society. You will reach milestones, goals, and dreams. 
And that is the exciting part that keeps you going. You will also discover that as time goes on, you're going to make mistakes. We all do. That is how true learning occurs. But throughout your race, whether it be 26.2 miles or some other measurement, your focus always needs to be on the finish line with the goal to be productive and contributing members in our society. To conclude my remarks this afternoon, I would like to share with you my final wishes to you, the Reading Memorial High School class of 2019. I wish each of you all of the success that you think you need. I wish you the tenacity, the courage, and the good fortune to someday find life's work about what you feel passionate about, rather than settling for one that either challenges or fulfills you. I wish you a sense of satisfaction and self-worth that comes from using some of your talents and some of your energy to help others who are in need. I wish you the wisdom to not forego the love of family and friends in some relentless pursuit of material success. I wish you the perspective to forgive yourself and learn from the mistakes which are inevitable. I wish you to have the strength to never give up because by not giving up, you will always have a chance to accomplish whatever you want to do in life. And finally, and probably the most difficult, I wish that you not become so preoccupied with achieving some cherished goal on some faraway day in some faraway land that somehow you fail to appreciate each and every day of your life. Class of 2019, we look forward to seeing where your adventures will take you and how each of you will make a difference. We are very proud of you, and we will be rooting for you as you cross your own finish line. On behalf of your parents, family, educators, and the entire Reading community, I congratulate you on your graduation. I wish you good fortune, happiness, and much success on your journey ahead. Megan Claire Cora.
Bryn Elizabeth Swanson. Alejandro E. Lacarano. Madison Rose Abrams. Omar Abubakar. Scott Daniel Alexander. Cecilia Marie Alfaro. Thomas Alardi. Nicole Howes. Riley James Applin. Michael Osella. Michael Osella. Jake Backer. John P. Bacon. Caitlin Bean. Samantha Morgan Folio. Daniel Beckenhues. Cameron Benassi. Ethan Bennett. Julia Isabel Bezra. Carolyn Rose Bigart. Eric Biangard. Anthony Bonfilio. <laughs> Caitlin Ann Bonatadavis. <laughs> Mark Wanser Bonabo. <laughs> Maria Lillian Boyle. Nicole Kathleen Broussard. Madison Taylor Brzezzi. Doran Thomas Burke. Nicholas Burpee. Mark Anthony Cabral. Brian Cahill. Michael Wallace Capone. Sarah Grace Cabral. Angelina Rose Carciero. Alana Maria Carr. Alexandria 
Angela Casarano. Robin Cashin. Angelo Michael Catalano. Benjamin Dumont Cavazzoni. Donnie Nicole Sensi. Gemma Rose Sensi. Vincent Chesnelovich. Sydney Ray Chevery. Kyle James Chua. Malik H. Cochran. Matteo Lawrence Quello. Ainsley Ainsley Page Cohen. Alyssa Brooke Cole. Abigail Rose Collins. Joseph Conroy. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Coppola. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Costello. <laughs> Jack David Cody. Keegan Holter. Caitlin Grace Commodoros. Gavin Joseph Croto. Elena Cusano. Ashley Cushing. <laughs> Courtney Cutone. <laughs> Jake Joseph D'Agostino. <laughs> Caroline Grace Dalton. Olivia D'Amico. Yeah. Patty Jane Damon. Yeah. Tiana Noel de Presenzo. Yeah. Sabrina Miranda de Bois. Karen Ellington DeLacy. Lucy Ann Dontremont. Luke Edwin Dontremont. Ryan Dominic Dieselman.
Riley Jason DeLoretto. John Dominic Damari. Dimitri Leo Doherty. Brendan Joseph Donovan. Brenna Donovan. Noah Joseph Donovan. Sean Edward Donovan. Victor R. DeSanto. Emily Ann Doucette. Riley Patrick Doe. Madeline Spencer Doyle. Emma R. Driscoll. Sean P. Driscoll. Haley Margaret Dufton. Kyle Joseph Dumas. Christopher Giovanni Duran. Audrey Noel Durso. Emily Ryan Eagleston. Daniel Paul Erickson. Shaylin Grace Farley. Vincent Bocon. Nora Margaret Faulkner. Brendan Fay. Daniel Fay. Erin Miriam Ferguson. Catherine Fischera. Jonathan K. Finn. Sean Michael Fisher. Luke Forbes. Ember Rose Fortuna. W. Freeman. Eric Fuller. Joshua Galvin. Larry Gow. Rachel Joan Geddes. Marina Ann Gennari. Megan Elizabeth Gilgan.
Holly Ann Gilson. Kate Elizabeth Juliana.
John Kelly Jr. Nicole Elizabeth Kendall. Even Daniel Kinsella. Chloe Frida Quinteris. Jamie Paula Quinteris. Joshua Clay. Grace Taggart Corey. Patrick John Henry Kroll. Emily Cooter. Hunter M. Kais. Eamon Ernest Langlois. Vito Lorenza. Josiah C. Latour. Elizabeth Mary Lamone. Maura Latondra. Kyle Leisner. Haley Lightbody. Jessica Lou. Alana Lofman. Kayla Ann Lofman. John Martin Love. Rachel Lyle Lucas. Matthew James Lydon. William Leon Lydon. Sophie Jameson Lynch. Tejan Makai Lywood. Jared Michael Malone. Emily Grace Marcotte. Owen Patrick Martell. Megan Therese Martello. Ryan Thomas Martello. Dominic Masucci. Jackson May. Lydia Jane May. Laura Adeline McCarthy. Nicholas S. McFarland.
Garen A. McGregor. Michael McHugh. Raquel Isabel McInerney. Matthew McLaughlin. Evan Meehan. Zachary Michael Melagrano. Natalie Walker Mendez. Alice Rose Merrill. Sarah Diane Marulo. Wendy Ruth Myers. Morgan Nicole Miller. Wyatt Midnight. Vivian Elizabeth Moda. Isabel Sophia Molitieri. Peter Mosquita. Owen Joseph Mulvey. Michael D. Murphy. James L. Murphy III. Eleanor Margaret Murray. Sarah A. Murray. Giuseppe Musto. Julia Nardone. Jessica Rose Naven. Julia Ann Naven. Devin Skyler Neary. Mary Grace Nee. Matthew A. Newman. Sita Webster Norton. Jovan Nortella. Jamel Nortella. Ryan Francis Norton. <laughs> Molly Ann Hockerbloom. John Patrick O'Connor. Matthew O'Halloran. Jessica Flynn O'Neill. Caitlin Delaney O'Neill. Evan Delaney 
James Edward Rigney. Rachel Rickoff. Casey Roberts. Anna F. Roberts. Caroline May Roscoe. Jacqueline Brown. Antonio Ruiz Nose. Lauren Catherine Ryan. Nassim Sahed. Matthew James Sanella. <laughs> Nicole Elizabeth Sainan. <laughs> Matthew Schneider. Dominic Kiyoshi Schumann. <laughs> Julia Grace Scozari. <laughs> Brett Lewis Sanders. <laughs> Rachel Sheik Abdu. Calvin J. Shemansky. <laughs> Brian Edwin Shin. <laughs> Natalia Sophie Shore. <laughs> Gary Short Jr. Rachel Elizabeth Sherlin. <laughs> Ashley J. Shutt. <laughs> Phoebe Esme Francis Singer. <laughs> Brooke Skian. Patricia Ann Snell. <laughs> Rebecca Emily Sosa Carmo. <laughs> Janelle Jordan Stark. Nathan M. Stelludo. <laughs> Taylor Streeter. <laughs> Brenna Sullivan. <laughs> Ryan Carmine Sullivan.
Isabella Quaticelli Tarashuk. Justin Ford Tomaszewski. Michael Tobin. Kelly Travis. Emma Lee Tucker. Anthony F. Bakari. Benjamin Paul Van Ness. Carrie A. Van Magnus. Nicholas Ventulo. Marielle Jacqueline Barrier. Thomas Edward Walsh. Lauren Mary Walsh. Kelly Marie Ward. Ariana Diane Weatherby. Thomas Edward Webb. Chris Wheeler. Alexandra Wheeler. Nils B. Willander. Joshua Robert Robert W. Yandel. Abigail F. Young. <laughs> Isabella Antonia Zagami. <laughs> Ji Ying Zhang.